Okay, um, before we put everything together completely, we need to talk a bit about the audio system, which is the speakers. Um, Emo has two speakers and for the ear holes right here and inside there's an indentation. I think I made that 28 millimeters uh, indentation which would match up nicely with these speakers here. So these are two watt speakers that I got off Amazon. Um, the main issue is holding them in there and I just do that by fixing this foam double-sided ring onto here and then sticking in there like a big sticker. Uh, I make these with some double-sided foam that you put carpet tape on and then I just take an X-Acto knife and I can cut it out in roughly the shape of a circle with a hole in the middle. Ideally doing that with a laser cutter is a lot easier but it, you know, with the way things are going, I have access to a laser cutter is a little tricky these days, but it doesn't have to be perfect. That's a little crude, but it works. Um, the other option is Adafruit sells these little speakers here, which are about the same diameter. They're slightly different shape. They're really cool speakers because they already have um, the connector on there, which is a Molex Pico Blade. The downside is these are a half watt. These are two watt. So, I mean, these will work. You have this nice adhesive already put on there, a little tab for taking it off, the connector. They're not quite as powerful um, as I would like, so I stick with the 2 watt, which isn't a bad solution, but you have to do some modification, and the first thing is, is some soldering. So, like the ones I just showed you, I need to put a Pico Blade connector on there. So, I got a Pico Blade cable. And I'm just going to cut it in half because I only need one side. And it doesn't need to be terribly long either. So we'll just cut some of it off as well. And then strip the cables. Uh, now there's a plus and minus thing already soldered on there. I'll stick with that. My I labeled my cable plus and minus as well. On the main header where I'm going to plug this into, on the circuit board it says which side should be plus or minus. Um, I don't know if it's a big deal or not, but I'll stick with that. But i got to remove those two wires first because I'm not going to use the default ones. So. Just remove that. I mean, I can mark this the way it was. This is minus, and this was plus. So I don't really think that matters. Let me get it backwards. I guess some speaker expert could tell me. This cable here corresponds to the negative connector on the expansion board. If it's a little troublesome getting it to stick with the same solder, it's working now. You can add more. Sometimes it's good to freshen it up and tin the lead a little bit. Put them on there. And that's not super secure on there, but it's good enough. And that's good. Let's do this one. And 
And if you wanted to make that super secure, you could add a dot of hot glue or something. There we go, we got two speakers done. And then what I'm going to do is put this little foam sticker on there. There we go. A self-adhesive speaker. There. Now those will fit inside here. I mean, you, if, if you make the foam tight enough, it'll actually just stay in. But who wants to rely on that? Well, I'm doing the same thing for the screen, though, right? So, that's good. Now, let's uh, take care of the rest of what we need to do. Which is servos. There are two servos that go in for the arms. Do, 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 do. You know, you probably wonder why I go through all the trouble putting servos in. A couple of reasons. They get nagged about it a lot for some reason. I don't know why. But the real reason is because for Astro Bimo, which this is basically a slightly bigger version of Astro Bimo, um, required the servos so Bimo could knock stuff around that's floating around uh, in microgravity. So that is why the servos exist and that's why I keep them. So they just slide onto the supports So for the uh, the screws, I use M 1.6 screws. Very tiny, very hard to work with. I would have preferred M 2s, but just a little tough to get the inserts to work with that. And to get them in there is no easy task. That's why I use a kit like this. And there's this tiny little there's a couple of things. They have this bendy screwdriver thing, which is handy. You may use that. They have this little handheld driver. And it has the correct socket. The correct socket, I believe, is this one. Those are socket head screws. Very important. Uh, it's very hard to use a regular screwdriver at this angle without stripping out the, the head. So if you put this in there, it kind of just stays in place if you snap it in, but I'm not going to rely on that. And then we need to put a screw in, which is easier said than done. Um, where did I put? So let's start with tweezers. Just to get it located correctly. It's already got one screw started. Don't want to do them all the way until you get both started. Just try and drive those in. They should go in fairly easily if since they're threaded. I don't know if you can see that. But I'm basically screwing a screw, so it's not much action here.
I believe this one did. So this little screwdriver thing is a lifesaver. I really recommend something like that. I suppose anybody who has to work on eyeglasses probably has something like that laying around. And let's do the other one. Okay, let's just tighten this last one up here. Yep. All right, that's good. Perfect. Who I can't begin to tell you how important it is for those to be socketed. I've done it with hex heads. They, they do sort of blow out. You um, can also use these Allen wrenches that are rounded on the bottom so you can kind of roll it around. So that worked out pretty good. So the arms will go on to here. Um, they won't be able to screw directly in. I, I need that ratcheting for that um, that little crossbar that usually has a, 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 a like a geared indentation to grab on to the hub. So what the servos come with are these little crossbars like this. Um, they're too long. Uh, I made a little indentation in the arm to fit that but it would extend out so I just chop it down and then it fits in there and basically gets sandwiched between the screw and the hub and it holds it in place and it won't rotate or slip. That's a final assembly step so we'll do that later. I just wanted to show you now. Okay, the last thing to do with this body um, We'll fix the uh, speakers at the la last before we put the body on, the back of the body on. Let's put this control panel on. Um, what this does is it has the charging port, an external HDMI, the on off switch, and some power indicators. And that just screws in because we already put the, uh, the inserts in there. So this is basically just going to be screwed in. Two point five screws. Could probably hold it in with just two screws, but it uses three. That's done right. The back should line up with all that. And it does. Got the switch and your connectors and some LEDs. So we'll uh, address this back panel next. Stay tuned for that, where we will affix the brains of the thing, Raspberry Pi and the expansion board we talked a little bit about, and the power and batteries, and this thing does a lot. So uh, stay tuned, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to get updates on when new videos appear, and uh, I will see you uh, for the next assembly video.